Hello everyone, I'm Jonas and today's video will be some thoughts on skill and strategy. Now I've had a cold for a few days so if I start coughing or something I apologize in advance but let's not hope it comes to that. And my two primary examples today will be Starcraft 2 and Poker which are both games of uh, concealed or incomplete information and they've also been out for a few years which means that the strategy um, has matured uh, in poker obviously more than StarCraft um, because poker has a ton of different strategy books and stuff like that but I also consider myself fairly competent at them obviously not at a high level but good enough to use them and talk about them in depth um, so what I'll be doing is basically going through the components of skill as well as then uh, moving on to strategy instead. Um, so the first part of skill is mechanics, which is all about performing your intended action. Um, stuff like clicking units, selecting, uh, dragging boxes, and stuff like that. Things that allow you to play the game basically. Moving around, aiming in shooter games, um, stuff that doesn't really require much thought. Um, so mechanics is the um, performing the action, which it tends to be really quick. Um, you don't really have to think much about the mechanics, um, at least not after you play the game for, let's say, 10 or 20 hours. You basically stop thinking about things like aiming or selecting units. Um, you notice when you do it wrong, but you can't really think yourself better at them. Um, the only thing that makes you better at this is practice. Practice. And it doesn't matter, like with aiming, it doesn't matter what game you play, as long as the control scheme is the same and the settings are the same, basically, like if you move the mouse this distance, the crosshair will move this distance. Um, so stuff like that. Which means that people who play a lot of different games and have been doing it for years are much much better than someone who just picks up and plays your game um, fresh basically, that hasn't played a lot of games before. Um, then you have strategy, which is the reasoning behind the action and a logical uh, series of actions, each leading to the next one. Like, I'm doing this because I want this to happen. So, the reasoning and the reason is the more, most important part of strategy. Like, this is what I want to achieve. Like, at point, at 10 minutes into the game, I want to have these buildings in StarCraft, for instance. Uh, this is obviously much more important than poker. Uh, the me mechanics of poker is really easy. Um, because they obviously want to make it as easy as possible for new, new players to start playing it and lose their money. Um, there's also a third part which is about teamwork in multiplayer games but I think that this video is going to be really long anyway so I left that out and it will have to be another video entirely. Um, I'm doing a lot of research on this one and it's going to be more based upon uh, studies and like real uh, science, which this isn't. This is just me, uh, me talking basically. Um, so the first thing with mechanics is it's also easy to teach, not just uh, within one single game, but between games as well. And the reason for this is, oops, wrong one. Um, what I like to call a feedback length, um, or the length of a feedback loop. So, what I mean with a feedback loop is basically you try something, uh, so you try it, then you uh, find out the result, uh, try result, and then you change your, uh, your next attempt because, uh, because you either did well and you change a lot, or you don't change anything and then or you failed and then you change a lot of it 
And the reason why it's easy to teach is best because the feedback loop is super short or instant. Let's say less than five seconds, for instance. Uh, it's just a time frame, but something like that. It could be for something like aiming, it's below half a second, like super quick stuff, which means that you go through these loops uh, constantly while playing the entire game, as well as you improve upon them constantly because you're repeating it uh, all the time. Um, and the first steps of learning a new game, at least for someone like me who's been playing a lot of different games, is you go in and you start mashing the buttons. Um, because some of them are uh, game independent, like left control stick for running, right control stick for controlling the camera, for instance. Or in an RTS game, panning the mouse to the corners, clicking on things to select them, stuff like that. Um, this obviously doesn't work in games where you unlock moves as you progress, because you will basically have to relearn once you learn a new move. Um, so yeah, um, I also included this objectives, and what I mean with this is you don't want to stop the game to show the player um, how to learn a new move. You basically want to give them objectives, like get from A to B, and then instead you have these hints popping up um, that basically teach you how to do. Um, I talked a bit about this in my latest video, um, but yeah, letting the player actually play the game is a really good thing. Um, so the next step is combining buttons and combi um, sequences of buttons, which tend to be game specific. Um, it can be stuff like um, some games have double jumps, some games don't. Um, in some games you can attack and then jump while in the attack, animation cancelling. Uh, some games you don't, and in some games it's different between different attacks. And then there is stuff like um, scoring, combos and special moves. Um, scoring is obviously extremely game dependent, uh, but it tends to be lower time, less damage taken, and do more damage, basically. Um, so the next step. The first step is obviously just finding out how you control your character. Um, so the second step is the game dependent stuff, um, which is also fairly easy to teach in um, in a tutorial setting or something like that. Um, basically starting out with easy missions where you can't die at all. Um, then there is also the luck versus skill factor, uh, which is being able to reliably do something versus doing something once and being allowed to move on through the game. Uh, in some games, for instance, you expect the player to know how to do something at a certain point in the game, which may or may not be true. So if you put them in a tutorial mission, um, let's say they want you want them to, um, I don't know, use the hook shot. Uh, or the hook thingy from Devil May Cry, for instance. If you just make a really simple puzzle, like here you start in an arena and your dude is just standing here, and then you have this hooking thing up here. Okay, maybe they just hit the button once and then you have your tutorial mission over, um, which may not mean that the player has actually learned anything at all. So um, instead of this, you might want to have, uh, like, I don't know, six or eight or ten uh, puzzles in a row that just reinforce the mechanic. Basically, the feedback loop of uh, something like a game, um, a more complex part of the game, is longer. Let's say this is uh, the running and jumpy part, um, so a feedback loop might be five seconds uh, or ten seconds instead um, of the sort of Let's say this is one second, and this is sub ten seconds. Um, so basically, as the feedback loops get longer, you have to enforce the um, the difficulty uh, or the learning part. So there is also the um, skill and difficulty 
which I mean with like number of errors allowed. And what I mean with this is let's say your player has he has 10 health. If your monsters do one damage, you're allowed to make 10 mistakes and then you die. If the monsters do 10 damage, you can only make one mistake. Um, so this is basically regardless of your uh, your difficulty um, you will allow for a certain number of errors. Um, this may or may not be super obvious like most games nowadays don't show your exact health number um, and they also don't show the exact damage number which means that you might may or may not know how many mistakes you're allowed to make um, and there are also uh, like different outcomes depending on different actions um, like if you're dodging let's say you're dodging but not perfectly you may take half damage so it's only half of a mistake because your timing was a little bit off uh, things like that making the games more analog um, but this may or may not be a number you might want to consider in your game uh, because this is basically the number of uh, the number difficulty you get. In some games you can only make one mistake and then you're dead and in some games when you make the first mistake you have to really try and catch up um, to get back in line. Um, so that's basically the um, the part of mechanics I'm going to talk about today and I'll be moving on to strategy instead. Um, the beginning strategy is harder to teach uh, for two reasons. Uh, number one, the feedback loop length. Um, in a game such as StarCraft this may be um, let's say 10 or 20 minutes. For a starting out player going into multiplayer mode um, as well as single player finding out if your strategy um, was any good or if it's super bad or stuff like that it may take 10 or 20 minutes. Sure some games may be over in 5 minutes if you're super terrible and your opponent is much better than you um, but given that um, you have to play this to find out if you're actually doing anything right at all it means that your repetitions will be really slow um, and you're, let's say you're playing for a couple of hours and you're queuing for a while um, this means that the you can only go through maybe five uh, five cycles five cycles in a day if you're not playing uh, super hardcore and I'm writing like shit or whatever um, so if you're only playing for a couple of hours every day a couple of nights a week or something like that you may go through let's say five cycles to uh, 20 if you're playing a lot in in a week uh, unlike the mechanics which you go through 20 repetitions in a minute um, so teaching strategy is really hard because um, you're unlikely to get any good at strategy on your own unless you play a ton like if you're playing a hundred matches in a week sure you will eventually get better um, I played a lot of Starcraft when it in the beta and when it just came out so I've played maybe 600 matches in total over several months um, which meant that I sure I got pretty good at some timings and stuff like that but I will get back to that later um, and the second reason why it's hard to teach is because it's extremely results oriented like if you're playing poker and you're just starting out any hand you win you might think that you played well and any hand you lose you might think you played poorly um, it's the same in Starcraft like if you won with a tactic once or twice and then you played something else and it didn't work then you might just go back to the starting thing and then eventually when you get to better opponents uh, it might just never work out at all which is really frustrating and just because you started with something that uh, won you some games it doesn't mean that it was a good idea to begin with um, like if you go into the poker game 
and you win, let's say, I don't know, a hundred dollars in a day, or something like that, you might think, oh, I'm so good at this, so I should move up, when it might not be the case at all. Um, sure, poker has a lot more uh, variation where the cards decide um, if you have a good or bad hand. Starcraft doesn't really have that random element. Um, whoops. Hmm. There should be another slide in here. Never mind. Um, so yeah, the first part about the strategy tends to be evolving in that when you go through the the quick sort of trial and error of the uh, feedback loops, um, you're basically doing the button, button mashing equivalent, which I tried to write here. Uh, and basically what you're doing is you're trying something out and then if it doesn't work, you scrap it completely and then you try something else. Um, just to make sure that you have sort of the entire scope of the game in your head. Uh, because in something like StarCraft there are a bunch of different units and if you fail with one you may not pick that up again at all. Sure, StarCraft has a campaign mode where you learn uh, a lot of the game but some of the units in the campaign mode aren't even available in the multiplayer. But yeah, if you start out building marines and medivacs in multiplayer you're going to do pretty well. Um, and then you also have the uh, sort of early aggression. The counter to early aggression surprisingly is to do nothing at all. Um, because there are two factors that are built into a game like StarCraft. Um, number one, you have your workers which can actually fight if you know how to use them. Um, which means that unless your opponent brings his workers as well, you're going to have a numbers advantage just by staying at home, basically. And number two is uh, reinforcements. Um, yeah, I'm writing like crap, but whatever. Reinforcements. You have to listen instead, I suppose. Um, which means that uh, two things. Uh, one, if you're building units at the same pace as your opponent, your units will always be uh, spawning right where they need to be, while your opponents have to run across the entire map. And this, combined with the worker advantage that you naturally have, means that um, any player who is just defending at the start of the game will have uh, an advantage. Um, so this means that uh, this is basically just extending the feedback loop naturally because it's super hard to win early. Um, this combined with the fact of StarCraft that every map has a narrow choke point, which means that you can build um, you can build two or three structures um, to cover it up and then just put a marine or something at the back, means that you will um, survive for much longer than is necessary. Um, like if the game is already lost, let's put it in air quotes, which doesn't really work when I'm not filming. Um, so if the game is lost, meaning that your opponent has 10 times the army you do, you might still uh, do okay or think that you're doing well just because you live longer uh, by hiding. Um, this early aggression, I didn't really know how to, where to put it in the presentation, but I thought I had to include it. Um, so this early aggression might actually fool you um, with your evolving starting strategy just by um, allowing you to live longer than you should. Um, but yeah, economics is the basic of all strategy games. Um, in, uh, in StarCraft it's workers and supply. If you keep building workers, uh, there are some figures, but let's say um, what is it? 3 in each gas and 8 in, in minerals, something like 24 per base. And then supply basically means that you should never be supply kept. Never kept. If you just satisfy these conditions, keep building workers until you have 24 per base 
and never get supply capped, you will probably do better than 95% of new players. Um, because having a good economy, it just gives you more units, which gives you a higher um, a higher chance. Um, I will try to go back to this one. Yeah, the number of errors allowed go way up when you have twice the army your opponent does. Um, so economics is the first thing you should uh, teach a player in a game. Um, not just building workers, but keep building workers while doing other things, which is one of the first uh, problems. Like if you go into StarCraft ladder and just start playing, you will notice some people just uh, completely demolish your uh, your economy. And even though they may not attack you for 30 minutes, they will still have such an army that when you finally lose, uh, you might have thought the game was close just because it dragged on for so long. But in reality, it was just that um, they completely crushed you for the entire game. They just didn't really win. Um, when it comes to poker, uh, bet sizing and stuff like this is the most important part. Uh, because most people might not realize this, but winning in poker is not about winning big hands. Because eventually everyone gets the big hands. When you sort of clear out the variance, variance, yeah, variance. Um, so let's say you play a hundred thousand hands of poker. This means that you will probably have a, st a statistically significant number of each of every combination of hands. Uh, I don't remember the number of combinations, but it's a couple of thousand, I think. Um, which means that uh, every cent you, um, every cent more you make when you have good hands, and every cent you cent less you lose on your losing hands, is basically money earned. And a lot of people think that. Uh, poker is about making all these flashy plays when it's all about being consistent and improving every single small mistake like something um, let's say you're playing something like a suited ace suited ace uh, something like ace six of spades for instance hands like these come up a lot in poker uh, compared to uh, some questions like how do I play when I've flopped the full house which comes around every several thousand hands um, you can't really make big mistakes just because they happen so rarely but hands like suited aces or suited connectors uh, ten jack of spades uh, for instance hands like these and these and small pairs like five five Oh, that's what's an ugly five. Um, hands that and situations that come up a lot are in general worth much more than hands which comes up rarely. Um, and this applies to something like StarCraft as well. Um, if you're playing and you go, oh, I don't know what happened because my opponent lifted his base and went to the gold uh, instantly. Like, it doesn't matter at all what you do, because you will only get one of those in every thousand games. So, changing your strategy because something rare happens is generally stupid. Because what you want to do is improve your worst um, worst situation that comes up a lot. Um, let's say you're bad at defending rushes, for instance. Or you're bad at closing the game when you get a big advantage early. Um, things that may come up um, not every thousand a game, but every every ten games for instance. Work on stuff like that. Work on uh, economy, which comes up every single game. Um, work on expanding. Oh wow, I'm writing like a crapshoot. Expanding. Um, just because um, if you improve things like, um, let's see, yeah, 
it, again, it comes back to the feedback loop. Things that happen rarely, um, if you work on them, you will uh, you will basically have a harder time of learning than something like expanding in economics, which comes on in every single game. Um, and this is the last point. No, it's not the last point, but this is basic st of strategy. Mechanics will always trump strategy uh, in the beginning game. Um, strategy isn't as important as uh, mechanics, because if you have a good economy, you build a lot of units, you just a move across your enemy. Um, this is obviously in StarCraft. In poker, your mechanics will never be as important. Um, because you learn them so qu so quickly, so yeah, it's just StarCraft. Um, so I just pull a couple of images off the internet. Um, drone flowchart here. Basically, what they are saying: make more drones until you have 24 per base or whatever the number is. I haven't played StarCraft since I made the last video on StarCraft, actually. So, and the second part here is day nine which you should really go and watch if you're interested in StarCraft strategy at all. He has a ton of good videos. But what I wanted to highlight is this part at the bottom here. Uh, if someone does a stupid strategy that revolves around, you know, lifting around things, just go fucking kill them. Um, that's the basic idea. If someone is trying to do something super complicated, you will probably beat him with just a good economy and a lot of units. Um, so that's the basic strategy. I think I will actually cut the video here. Um, I have like 10 more slides, but the video is 27 minutes already. So um, I will make this a multi-parter. Um, the next video will probably be advanced strategy. And then we'll see if I have time to make the uh, suggestions regarding uh, the teaching of mechanics and strategy or if I will make this a three-parter and that will be the third part. So this will be enough for today. Uh, over and out and thank you for watching.